So for, for SKA's uh, specific uh, focus areas, it's about using data for visualization, for high-speed streaming, for mass storage, um, power-efficient computing. Often computers of, of that size require, for one, large amounts of cooling, um, which draws a lot of energy, which does not speak to the SDGs. <laughs> and if you're going to be taking all of, your, all of your data away from other processing areas and using it for astronomy, that also doesn't speak to the SDGs, does it? Um, sensor networks, machine learning algorithms and analytics. Give you the size, impression of the size. A lot of this language I don't quite understand, but, but it's quite impressive. Uh, so <laughs> so from, from Meerkat, you, your collection will be about 2 terabytes per second about 500 DVDs a second um, at the collection point, at the correlator, correlator point. You'll need to process that at 0.7. Uh, you'll have to archive that at about 20 gigs per second, and then um, your computer load capacity will be about 200 teraflops, I think. Yeah. And then that increases significantly up until the time you get to the full SKA, where you'll be talking about petaflops, I think. Uh, large volumes of data. So, <laughs> so um, what we also do is we make sure that um, by having one of the one of the um, fundamental requirements we were tasked with by having this particular infrastructure in South Africa is that it needs to benefit South, the South African citizens in two particular fundamental ways. One is to increase citizenry. The the citizenry's science knowledge, so science literacy among the general populace, make sure people are able to speak science more often, which has its obvious uh, rewards. But the second one is to make sure that we are able to build human capacity in South Africa and across the African continent. And uh, we've been running a grants program since 2011, and <coughs> since then we've been, we have had, we've been able to issue in excess of 94 research grants. Uh, which stretches the entire excellence pipeline from from school at primary school level all the way to undergraduate through to postdoctoral um, and and at the level of centers of excellence and this research training happens in partnership and in collaboration with other partners such as the Royal Society Foundation the Newton funds um, uh, special program uh, dedicated to radio astronomy and and then and then also with the African partner countries. This is a fine example of, of brain uh, drain reversal where Oleg Smirnov is a world international leading scientist on, on imaging, data imaging, and he now has, is, is happy to be living in South Africa and making sure that he's nurturing talent in South Africa in imaging. The gentleman on your right, um, on, on your, f oh, it's your left, sorry. Uh, it's, it's my left as well. On your left um, <laughs> is from the Eastern Cape, and we, we, had, we did a documentary uh, on him and, we, we, and, his, and his, his study path, um, where he studied physics and his undergraduate degree, went to UWC, um, started to, uh, completely, uh, decided to, to come to a master's in astrophysics and cosmology with. Uh, Oleg as his supervisor, and then decided to, to join the SKA project as a telescope operator. And what was amazing was that he became a sought-after um, astronomer across the globe at, the, at that age, and at that level of qualification, because not only was he working on a very sophisticated, or the build of a very sophisticated, sophisticated machine, um, he operates that machine, so he's able to understand the instrument as well as use the data, which is very rare uh, in, in, in science projects of this nature. With, he worked on CAT-7, which is the precursor to, to Meerkat, the Karoo Array Telescope made of seven array instruments, and his PhD now is on mapping the universe. So he wants to build a three-dimensional map of the universe. and he's, and his PhD is to lay the foundations of how that mapping exercise will happen in, um, using Meerkat. This is um, some, some uh, pictures taken of our 
of our postdoctoral. Uh, uh, we, we have this grants uh, convention every year, and I think the aim of these pictures is to show how they grow, how, how many more people grow every year. So hopefully we won't push out all the trees, which is against again against the SDGs, but we we will be showing that there are more and more people that are prolifically growing in the area of astronomy and cosmology. Just to illustrate the the point of collaboration and the importance of the point that was made earlier about private sector collaboration, not only just dependent on public sector funding. Okay, so what was I, I, I drew upon these notes from the World Bank where they where they made this very interesting point that one of the key requirements of the SDGs and in turn the AU 2063 would be monitoring the success of these indicators being achieved. So setting systems in place that will be able to monitor whether, whether climate change or the interventions around climate change have been affected or whether interventions around um, infant mortality has been affected. And, and all of those would need huge data processing, power. So, so data outside of data being made available to, to do research, which is part of the SDG requirements, 169 objectives of them, we are also looking, 169 targets rather, we're also looking at how does one monitor these particular process. How do you create inventories in order to create a baseline? Otherwise you won't be able to show progress, is it? If you, if you don't have a baseline of against which to measure. But how do you establish those baselines across the entire globe and in particular across Africa? And then deciding on which projects to run in, and the decision powers around because all of them are going to come to you and say, oh no, we feel perfectly fit into the SDGs, but which projects to decide upon which will allow you to achieve those objectives? And that requires data processing power. So with radio astronomy and also with this establishment of what we call an African research cloud, which is similar to a European research cloud, even though we feel that it's got to be more uh, practically implemented, we believe that we'll be speaking to the SDGs by achieving those particular points at the bottom. Automation, data analysis, machine learning techniques, um, establishment of the infrastructure, hard, hard, novel hardware, software, that, doesn't, that will not only be used by astronomers and cosmologists, but also by, by other uh, natural science or fundamental research areas. Data flow architecture, systems for dealing with massive scale computing and data, and this aspect of control and monitoring systems. Uh, which is so critical for, for, for a successful SDG agenda. Um, SDG agendas that would be benefiting from some, an African research cloud would research community, clearly, uh, natural resource management, uh, agriculture, um, education. And what's interesting is that people that, these young people that are being trained in data science and cosmology and astronomy ultimately can be used in any sector because an actual real scientist is ultimately just a data processor, a data scientist, isn't it? Um, somebody who sits in the bank has to be processing data. Our, our new age of information workers are predominantly data workers or data processors. And if you are able to be skilled in such a sophisticated level of data processing, such as astrophysics or cosmology, you should be able to be absorbed within any sector, with any of those sectors, even lead them. Um, we developed a resource. Sorry, I just want to go back. We developed a really good resource, um, which, if you if you want to take a note of of the link there, which shows the direct alignment between radio astronomy across Africa and the SDGs, as well as the um, African Union's 2063 aspirations, uh, where you can read even further. I didn't think it would be appropriate, given the fact that we're speaking about SDGs, to be handing out any paper-based materials, so they are electronically available. Otherwise, you are welcome to contact me on my email address, and I'll send it to you.